Normally, if you want to solder, you would use a soldering iron. But what if you're not at home? What if you're not in, in your shop and you're in your car or you're in your airplane and you discover you have a broken wire and you can no longer go anywhere? What do you do? Well, that's when we introduce the field soldering kit. Inside this kit, which is in a normal tin can, you have a pair of nail clippers, a heat source, some spools of wire and solder, and then different sizes and, and uh, colors of heat shrink. Now this, this design is not my own. This came from Instructables.com and it is protected under the Creative Commons license. You may use this, modify it, but you may not use it for any, mon any monetary gain. To make your spool for your solder, you take a regular ink pen, I use, I use big pens, you remove the cap, pull out the ink sleeve, and then you remove the ink from the ink sleeve. And then what you're left with is this, right here. You put it in your box, measure it to where, to where you want to cut it, and go ahead and, and cut it. And then you'll end up with something like, like this. Then you want to take your solder with some type of round object which is smaller than the, than the inside diameter of your, of, your, of your pen. And just wrap it around as many times as you need until you have the length that you want. Leave a tail and cut it off. And then you would slide, you slide what you have inside of your ink, ink pen and put your little nose back on it. And if you wanted to, you could put the end cap from the other piece onto it. You don't have to. It, 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 it won't fall out. It just makes it nice and neat. And then I've done the same thing with just regular 24 gauge wire for emergency uses. Now what we're going to do is we're going to solder together two pieces of wire. Two pieces of wire. But first we want to have heat shrink. So bear in mind that your solder is not going your solder joint is not going to be pretty and it's going to be rather large comparatively. So get a larger heat shrink that will will be able to go over top of it. And about a, about an inch, inch piece. And you'll slide it over your first wire. That's that's actually probably pretty long. Slide it over your wire first. Don't forget that, otherwise you're out of luck. Okay, then take your nail clippers and strip your wires back. A little longer than the way you would normally normally strip them, about an inch, inch and a half. And there is an art to this. It's not a science. You can imagine this will be a little hard to do under the under your instrument panel of your of your car. Take your wires, leave them fanned out, and twist them together. And take your solder, about an inch, inch and a half, probably closer to an inch. And what you're going to do is you're going to start at the, at the base of the copper wire, and you're going to wrap tight, tight wraps right at the base. Now what you want to do is you'll want to solder or heat, apply your heat source towards the end of the wire. If you do it on the solder itself, it'll just get hot and and drop and drop off. You want to heat up the wire, which will then in turn heat up the, the uh, solder. The wires will get hot, so if you want to, you can use a pair of pliers. Make sure you ro rotate it so it gets even heat distribution. There it goes. There you go. It's kind of hard to see, but you have a good solder joint right, right in through here. Take your, take your clippers, cut off the excess. If there's any solder runoff, cut that off. Take your wire. Careful, it's hot. Fold it down. Heat shrink tubing over your joint. 
And do not do not apply direct heat to the heat shrink tubing. Allow the heat to rise and to shrink it up. This takes a little bit of time. Have patience. And giving the right size tubing is a very good plus right here. Anyway, in an emergency, this will work just fine. Heat shrinks on there, and you've got you got your wire now. That is how you do gorilla soldering or emergency field soldering.